So this will be the first lecture out of chapter 19. So this chapter covers amines. And so in this first lecture, we'll look at how to name amines, how to classify amines, and just remind you of their some of their basic uh, spectroscopy uh, properties. So if we look at first how to classify amines. Uh, so first of all, so amines are different than alcohols. So if we took this alcohol, for example, and classified it, we would say, okay, the OH is attached to that carbon and that carbon has two carbons attached to it, so we would call that a secondary alcohol. Um, but amines are different. So for amines, all you do is count the number of carbons attached to nitrogen. So that nitrogen has one carbon attached to it, so it would be a primary amine. So same with the one on the left, that nitrogen has one carbon attached to it, so that's a primary amine. So prim primary amines, Uh, the nitrogen has two hydrogens attached to it and then one alkyl group. Okay, so this is the next one. So that nitrogen has that carbon, that carbon and that carbon attached to it. So that would be a tertiary amine. So tertiary amines have no hydrogens on nitrogen. Uh, this next one, so this nitrogen that has one, two, three, four carbons attached to it, so it would be a quaternary amine. And then the next one, the nitrogen has two, hot, two carbons attached to it, so it would be a secondary amine. So secondary amines, the nitrogen has one hydrogen attached to it. Okay, so if we look at how to name amines, so three carbon chain, that would be propane. To name it as an amine, just change the E ending to amine. So that would be propan and the nitrogen's on carbon number one, so propan one amine. <clears throat> so in this case, you have two three carbon chains attached to nitrogen. So a common way to name that would be called dipropyl uh, amine. Okay, uh, so the next one, now you have two different carbon chains attached to nitrogen. So one of them will be the parent and the other one will be a substituent on nitrogen. So obviously the four carbon chain would be the parent. And so when you have an alkane chain on nitrogen that is not the parent, then it's a substituent on nitrogen. And the way you handle that is you say N-ethyl. So if it's a substituent on nitrogen, you prefix it with N. So N-ethyl and then butan one amine. Okay, so in this example now you have three carbons, three carbon chains attached to nitrogen, uh, three, three different chains. So a three carbon chain, a one carbon chain, and a, and a six carbon chain, so that would be the parent. So now you would have, so a propyl and a methyl on nitrogen, and you put them in alphabetical order, so N methyl, and then N propyl and cyclohex N amine. Okay, uh, so this next one is amine you should have memorized already from a previous chapter. All right, that's aniline. <clears throat> um, okay, so in this case, then that's aniline, and then you have a cyclohexyl as a substituent on nitrogen, so that would be an N cyclo. Hexyl, aniline. <clears throat> okay, so for the next one, now you have two functional groups in the molecule, an alcohol and an amine. So which one has priority? It would be the one with more oxygen, so it's gonna be the alcohol. So this is your parent. And what do you call the amine if it doesn't have a priority? Then you would call it amino. So this would be one, two, three, four. So that would be four amino uh, cyclohexanol for the OH, alcohol. And of course, there's one more detail missing. Uh, in this case, you have stereochemistry to worry about. So in terms of stereochemistry, um, OH is below. below hydrogen and nitrogen's below hydrogen. 
So they're both below hydrogen, so they're cis, right? So cis for aminocyclohexanol, right? Never Z. You don't use Z for rings. You only use E and Z for double bonds. So for the ring, only, only cis and trans. Okay, so here then that would be your parent. So if you remember from a previous chapter, that's benzaldehyde. So now you have a, a nitrogen with two methyl groups attached to it. So that would be um, para or P for para P or four um, dimethyl. Since it's, since it's a, not the uh, parent, it's a substituent. It's amino, right? So in so dimethyl amino benzaldehyde or P in in dimethyl would be the most technical way since the two methyls are on nitrogen and then you prefix it with N so N N dimethyl amino benzaldehyde so for the quaternary amine so now you have um, <clears throat> four ethyl groups attached so that would be tetra ethyl or you, you could say n n n n tetra ethyl uh, so if it's so if you remember what nh4 plus is called from gen chem one it's one of those polyatomic <clears throat> ions you had to have memorized that's ammonium so if nitrogen is quaternary then it's called ammonium so n so tetra ethyl ammonium and then the counter ion, since nitrogen's got four bonds on it, it's going to be positively charged. So it's going to be a salt. So tetraethyl ammonium. And then Cl minus will become chloride, Br minus bromide, I minus iodide, for example. Okay, these next two are a couple of you should have memorized from a previous chapter. This is pyrrole. This is pyridine. spell it and then lastly so another butanamine but now the nitrogen's on carbon number two so that would be butan two amine <clears throat> okay so that's some ex basic examples of how to name amines uh, so one um, fundamental property of amines and so this is couple of examples of, of means and based on their names maybe you can figure out what that property is of a means putrescine and cadaverine um, these are produced by the um, putrefaction or breakdown of amino acids in animal tissue uh, so one property of amines is like thiols is that they stink Okay, so for bonding in amines. So technically this amine is chiral, um, right? This will be priority one, oh, sorry. The nitrogen will be one, and that will be two. And hydrogen is three, the lone pair of electrons. Priority is based on mass, and electrons don't have much mass. So that would be one, two, three. This would be the R, stereoisomer. Um, but you generally cannot, even though that is chiral, you generally could not isolate it stereochemically pure because amines undergo this process called inversion so you could think of this like an if it caught a burst of wind from the bottom think of it like an umbrella flipping inside out then this amine will invert oh my goodness got mistakes here that should not be nh2 that should be ch3 so that's going to mess up our stereochemistry probably so that should be CH3, so maybe not. So let's see. So one, two, three. Um, yes, so now it is, that's the S isomer that I had drawn. Okay, so if that inverts, it flip, flips inside out like an umbrella. Then now that would be the one two, three, R isomer. So again, if the nitrogen has three different things plus the lone pair attached to it, it's going to be chiral, but you generally can't isolate it in stereochemically pure form because it undergoes rapid inversion. 
unless like in this next example where the nitrogen is part of a three member drain for example or, or in some instance where it's very difficult to invert so this would have a difficult time inverting um, so right now it's sp3 to start with but if it inverts it has to go through this sn2 or sp2 uh, transition state where the nitrogen is flat those bond angles would want to be 120 degrees but they're not able to be 120 because of the three member drain so that inversion is not very favorable. So in a, in a mean like that, you could isolate it stereochemically pure. Okay, so in terms of their basic physical properties, so if we compare an amine to an alcohol, for example, um, so the two that I have have about the same surface area. So that factors out of the equation, uh, but the alcohol has a much higher boiling point than the amine. So why is that the case? Well, of course, the alcohol can make hydrogen bonds, and that's going to increase the boiling point. And the amine can make hydrogen bonds as well, because nitrogen is partial negative and hydrogen is partial positive on nitrogen. So they can both make intramolecular hydrogen bonds, but which ones are stronger? Uh, that would be stronger for the alcohol because that hydrogen is significantly more partial positive charged since oxygen is a lot more electronegative than hydrogen and the nitrogen is so um, weaker stronger H bonds for the alcohol so that's going to increase its boiling point compared to the amine if, if they are similar molecular weight and similar surface area so within a series of amines, um, you can see their boiling points. So these are all structural isomers of each other, all constitutional isomers of each other. So why does the first one have a higher boiling point? And the, so the first one's a primary amine, and then this one's secondary amine, and this one's tertiary amine. So the primary amine is going to have a higher boiling point. One reason they can make more hydrogen bonds, right? So it can make hydrogen bond there, and it can make hydrogen bond there as well. Uh, whereas the secondary amine can't make as many hydrogen bonds, and the tertiary amine cannot make hydrogen bonds to itself at all. So that would be one factor in why the primary amine is a higher boiling point than secondary and tertiary. Again, if they're of the same molar mass, in this case, and same, same structural formula. In terms of their water solubility, so as you can imagine, the first amine listed is insoluble in water. It's got way too many carbons. Uh, the second one has eight carbons, but it does have some water solubility. It'd be sparingly soluble in water. So why is it water soluble at all? Well, again, because that nitrogen is partial negative and it can make a hydrogen bond to a water molecule, so that will give it some water solubility. Uh, this next amine with only three carbons is very soluble in water. Uh, but now if we compare amines and alcohols, so the alcohol had the higher boiling point, right? but the amine has the uh, higher water solubility, again, if they're of the similar uh, structure, similar surface area. So in this case, same surface area for the most part. Uh, but why is the amine so much more water soluble? It'll form stronger H bonds. To water and it also can make more hydrogen bonds to water. Right, in this case it can make a, it could accept a hot, accept a hydrogen bond from water and donate two hydrogen bonds to water. And worse, the alcohol can only make two hydrogen bonds to water. Uh, but those hydrogen bonds would be a little bit weaker compared to, so nitrogen is a good electron donor compared to oxygen because oxygen is going to hang on to its lone pair electrons more tightly. Nitrogen's not as electronegative as oxygen, so it's not going to hang on to its lone pair of electrons as tightly, so making them more available to make a hydrogen bond. And then the hydrogen on water is a very partial positive, so that's going to make a very strong hydrogen bond. Okay, so one of the most fundamental properties of amines is that they are bases. So if you remember what a base is, a base is something that accepts a proton. 
that would be the Bronsted Lowry definition, or it's something that can donate electrons, so that would be the Lewis definition. So if we compare, so we're just gonna compare a couple of the, several different types of amines and see what factors affect the basicity of amines. So to act as, an amine, uh, as a base, the nitrogen has to donate its lone pair to something, right? So if we compare cyclohexylamine to aniline, so one way to determine um, which nitrogen is more basic is to examine the factors that impact the electron density on nitrogen. Right, so the more electron density the nitrogen has, the stronger it's, so that the more basic property it's gonna have. <clears throat> and so one way to also look at those, which one is a stronger acid or base is to look at the pKa of the conjugate acid. Sorry about that. So this will be the conjugate acid for both. So if we look at the pKa values of the conjugate acid of the base, so 10.6 for cyclohexylamine conjugate acid and 4.6 for aniline's conjugate acid, so which one is more acidic? Uh, that would be aniline's conjugate acid, right? Because the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So if this is a stronger acid than this, then which one is a stronger base, aniline or cyclohexylamine? Um, well, if this, basically what that means is does this does not, it does not want a hydrogen as much because if you put a hydrogen on nitrogen, to make the conjugate acid, acid of aniline, it would more likely give that hydrogen back up to reform aniline. Where cyclohexylamine, once it picks up a hydrogen, it has a its conjugate acid has a high pKa, meaning it it's it's more stable like that. So it does not want to give a hydrogen up to go to reform cyclohexylamine. So the cyclohexylamine is is so the more basic would be this one. All right, so stronger base is gonna make a weaker conjugate acid. And a weaker base is going to form a stronger conjugate acid because that acid wants to give its hydrogen back up to reform the weak base. <clears throat> so how can you explain that? Um, so which nitrogen has more electron density on it? This one does. Right, that cyclohexylamine, that lone pair is setting on nitrogen, it has nowhere to go. Whereas for the aniline, right, that lone pair is delocalized into the benzene ring. If it's delocalized into the benzene ring, then it's less available to donate to something else, which is what has to happen if it's gonna act as a base. Okay, so again, the more electron density setting on that nitrogen, uh, the stronger the base it's gonna be. Okay, so this will be a resonance effect. If resonance delocalizes the electrons, that's gonna decrease the basicity of the nitrogen. Um, so this is a resonance effect. Okay, so if we compare these next two, um, amines, so if they pick up a hydrogen, So we want to take the lone pair, make a bond of hydrogen. So that means the lone pair is no longer there. Now there's a bond of hydrogen, so that would be the conjugate acid. And same here, if pyridine picks up a hydrogen, so it donates its lone pair, now that lone pair is a bond to the hydrogen. Okay, so which is a stronger base? So you look at the conjugate acids. Um, this has a pKa of 5.2, so this is a stronger. And this has a pKa of 11.2, so this is a weaker conjugate acid. So the stronger base is going to be 
this one, and this would be the weaker base. Because that pyridine does not want to pick up a hydrogen as much as the other one does. And so the difference here is that um, that is an sp3 nitrogen, whereas that is an sp2 nitrogen. So this is a hybridization effect. So in terms of hybridization, sp3 amines are stronger bases than sp2 amines, which are stronger bases than sp hybridized amines. And the reason behind that, if it's sp, um, if those electrons are setting in an sp orbital, it's 50% s character, 50% p character, then those electrons are closer to the nucleus of the atom, so they're more tightly held. So they're less likely to be able to bond to something else. Whereas here, it's only 25% s character and 75% p character, so those electrons are less tightly held because they're further away from the nucleus. Okay, so if we compare these two amines, so again, if they react with an H+, plus, so donate the electrons to H+, plus, so which one's more likely to do that would be the one that is the stronger base. Uh, so this is pyro, that molecule is called pyrolidine. So if pyro donates its electrons to hydrogen, that's bad, right? Because this is aromatic. Because those electrons are part of the aromatic pi system. So if it donates those electrons to hydrogen, then it's no longer no longer aromatic. And of course, losing aromaticity is not a good thing. <clears throat> so those those lone pair of nitrogen are essentially not very basic at all because you don't want to lose aromaticity. Uh, whereas at the top molecule, pyrolidine donates its electrons to nitrogen. I mean, to hydrogen. That doesn't really matter because it's not an aromatic molecule. So it has no effect on aromaticity, but it does for pyrrole. So you can see this big difference in pKa. So this is very acidic, right? It wants to get rid of that hydrogen to reform pyrrole so that it can be aromatic again. So that's a difference of about uh, 12. In the log if you remember, pKa is a logarithmic scale. So that's a difference of about 10 to the 12. So pyrrolidine is about 10 to the 12 times more basic than pyrolas. So this will be an aromaticity effect. Right? If a lone pair of electron on nitrogen is part of an aromatic ring, you do not want to use it as a base. Okay, so let's take these five molecules. So there's lots of different factors that affect the basicity of an amine. So if each of these picks up a hydrogen or nitrogen, So we need to get rid of the lone pair, whoops. And make a bond to hydrogen. So become the NH4 plus. So the methylamine, and then this is primary, this is secondary, this is tertiary, and this is quaternary. And of course, the quaternary amine is not basic at all because it has no lone pair. So it doesn't have a lone pair, it can't donate to something else, so it has no basic properties. So now, if we compare the methyl the amine to primary, secondary, or ammonia, sorry. Uh, so these are pKb values. So pKb similar to pKa, right? The lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. The lower the pKb, the stronger the base. So we can see here in, so the one with the lowest pKb is the secondary amine and then the primary amine, and then the tertiary, so in terms of basicity. And 
water. Um, secondary is more basic than primary, which is more basic than tertiary, which is more basic than ammonia. But if this was the gas phase, it's different. Then tertiary is more basic than secondary, more basic than primary, more basic than ammonia. So what's going on here? Um, well, so this is easy to understand if it's in the gas phase, uh, because if you think of that like a carbocation, it's tertiary. And then this would be secondary, and then that would be primary, and this would be unsubstituted. So the tertiary, of course, is more stable because alkyl groups are electron releasing, so they can help stabilize that positive charge. So that makes the tertiary ammonium ion easier to form. If this is in the gas phase, then there's nothing external to stabilize it. Its stability comes from within itself. And that's going to be the alkyl groups helping stabilize the positive charge. So the more alkyl groups on nitrogen, the more stable that positive charge is. So what's the difference in water? Well, now in water, there's competing forces. So if we had a water molecule, water molecule can help stabilize these things as well because they can make hydrogen bonds. So the primary, so the tertiary amine ammonium salt could only make one hydrogen bond. Secondary two, uh, primary could make three, of course, to all three of these hydrogens. And then this could, and ammonium can make four hydrogen bonds. So ammonia can make more hydrogen bonds, but it has less alkyl groups to stabilize the positive, right? Tertiary could, has more alkyl groups to stabilize the positive, but it can make fewer hydrogen bonds. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of an apples and oranges comparison there. And so the way it works out is that secondary amines kind of get the best of both worlds. They can make two hydrogen bonds to water, but they have two alkyl groups to stabilize the positive charge. And so the, the, in water, that becomes the most stable, so it becomes the easiest to form. Okay, and then one more effect on the basicity. So if we compare these three aromatic amines, um, so if again, if they pick up a hydrogen to make the ammonium salt, uh, then which of these N pluses is most stable? Well, so if you remember, alkyl groups are electron donating groups. So that's going to help stabilize the positive charge. And this CF3, which is positive, is going to be removing the electron density from the ring. So it's going to be making this ring positive, partial positive, And now you're going to have two positives next to each other. So that's a bad. So basically what this, um, the way that this works out is that electron withdrawing groups will decrease the basicity. Right, because that CF3 group is pulling the electron density towards itself because of all of the fluorines, and so that makes the lone pairs less available to donate to something else. Whereas alkyl groups are basically any activator from the aromatic chapter is going to donate electron density into the ring, and that's going to increase the electron density on nitrogen, making the nitrogen more basic. Okay, so what would you expect for the nitro? Would that decrease the basicity of the nitrogen or would that increase the basicity? Well, the nitro nitrogen is a deactivator. So it's going to pull electron density that way. And this is easy to illustrate with resonance. Right? You could take that lone pair and move it there. Move that double bond there, that double bond there, and that double bond there. So you can take that lone pair on, on nitrogen and you, you can delocalize it all the way to oxygen. Now the lone pair is there. So that decreases the electron density on the amine, making it much less basic. Okay, so this is just a summary of the different factors affecting basicity. So if you delocalize the electrons on nitrogen, like here, or like in the very first example, that will decrease its basicity. Hybridization, sp3 amines are more basic than sp2 and sp. If the lone pair on nitrogen is part of the aromatic ring, it's not basic at all. Substitution, and that depends on whether it's in the gas phase or water. Um, oops. 
Right, gas phase, tertiary is the most basic, water, secondary is the most basic. And then the electron withdrawing groups decrease basicity, electron donating groups increase basicity. Okay, and then just a quick reminder about the spectroscopy of amines. So in IR, the most significant thing is if it's a primary amine where you have two hydrogens on nitrogen, Then in this region around 3,400, you would see two peaks for the asymmetric and symmetric NH stretch. <clears throat> if there's only one hydrogen on nitrogen, so if it's secondary, then you only see one peak in that region. And if it's tertiary, then you don't see any peaks for the NH in that region because there is no NH. <clears throat> and then in NMR, um, so NH signals is the most characteristic, so it's typically a broad singlet. And then if you added a drop of D2O, so this can make a hydrogen bond, and then you can get hydrogen deuterium exchange. So now the hydrogen that was on nitrogen is now on the water molecule, so that NH signal then would disappear. And that's an easy way to know if you had an NH, if a signal was from an NH. Add a drop of D2O to the NMR tube after you record the spectra, shake it up, Take the NMR again, if that peak disappears, it was an NH. Okay, uh, so just as, we'll just take a couple of examples. So the type of questions you would see. So let's see if we had, So these would be isomers of each other. So which circle the stronger base? And you'd add, I'd have to specify the medium. So let's say it's a gas phase. Or if we do this. So this would be one thing you would have to do. <clears throat> For this material is given um, a couple molecules circle the one that's got the more basic nitrogen in it <clears throat> so if this is the gas phase well this amine is tertiary and this is mean is primary so tertiary amines are more basic in the gas phase and if we compare these two molecules and what you would have to recognize is this lone pair is resonance delocalized through oxygen and this and this lone pair is not, so this would be the stronger base, right? Okay, we'll stop there.